So number four, I've already mentioned it. Do not lecture. Do not lecture. I'll get you. Let's see. Tomorrow, not not tomorrow. <laughs> no, we can be here tomorrow. Uh, next week, I'm going to get into uh, the types of teaching methods that are good in the ESL classroom uh, and a way to prepare. We have what's called the PPP, the uh, Presentation, Practice, and Performance Method for the uh, ESL classes. Uh, but um, basically, I'll give you some ways next week of how to uh, uh, not lecture a little bit better. But uh, but okay, you take a uh, uh, what, what happens in an ESL classroom, and most of these that I'm giving you are all mistakes I made when I went to China. I didn't know anything about teaching English as a foreign language, and it was, wow, did I make a lot of mistakes when uh, God bless those people <laughs> as I was teaching them. But uh, uh, what happens is, I I've seen teachers do this, they get up there, I've done it myself, and they say, okay class, today we're going to talk about a subject, if you had a million dollars, what would you do with it? And everybody will just look at you blankly. And so then you feel a little embarrassed. And so you say, um, okay, if I had a million dollars, and you ramble for about 20 minutes, and then you say, okay, what would, what would you do with a million dollars? And the student is absolutely not prepared to be able to answer this question. You've not led into it. You've not given him vocabulary to be able to answer the question correctly. You've not given him sentence patterns to be able to answer, this, answer it correctly. And they're just going to feel, okay, so what will always happen, if I had a class this size and, an ES, and you were all ESL students, probably the top 5% would do all of the talking, and the other 95% of the students would be completely lost the entire hour. And have no idea what's going on and they will walk out thinking my English is terrible <sighs> and I've been there <laughs> I've done it to plenty of classes but uh, okay so number four do not lecture again number one number one give simple and clear instructions number two be consistent with your instructions number three don't keep a running dialogue of events happening happening in your class. For example, you know, I've seen this happen a lot. A teacher would be teaching and and uh, maybe they had something in their hand and they're writing and they oh oh I just dropped my pen. Let me pick up my pen. Oh I just picked up my pen. <laughs> Again, you're just adding to the teacher talk time. It doesn't need to happen. 